Unreal Engine 5.3 was just released and introduced official VDB support. So now it's time to finally share with you how I did this insane Formula Drift sequence. Hi there, Post Processes here and welcome back to my Epic Unreal Engine series. Both of you asked on my previous video how to import smoke VDBs and work with it in Unreal Engine. So I decided to share with you my whole pipeline from exporting animation from Unreal and preparing it for Houdini Artist to importing VDB back to Unreal. And what is more important, I will guide you through some real case scenario, not just demonstrating VDB support. You will get to know how to make VDB visible in fast tracing, changing parameters in sequencer, how to make VDB look more cinematic and overcome some issues that you may encounter while working with the VDBs. Let's get into it! First, we need to prepare a car animation and export it to Houdini Artist. Important notice, try to place your drifting car in zero coordinates of your level or somewhat close to the origin, as different software may use different measure units or axes. Your imported VDB may be way far away in the level and you won't be able to even find it. So it's better to have your simulation generated in zero coordinates and then move it in different place in your level. Here I have my sequence of formula drifting with camera flying nearby the wheel. In order to export this animation first we need to bake transform. Because Houdini and some other 3D software may not support smooth keyframes and object movement. In order to bake transforms you need to select all objects you would like to be baked, in my case car and camera. Click here on settings and select bake transforms. Now every movement of your camera or object is baked to each single frame, including camera shake. Now we need to select all the objects we would like to export for Houdini Artist to bake it into FBX. Select all actors in the sequence which you would like to take part in simulation. It is very important to check the camera too, as in Houdini for example you have option to disable simulation which is happening behind the camera and basically cut it off, which will save render times and your disk space. Here I also placed plane as floor and included it into selection, so smoke will collide with it too. Now as everything is checked, click on Actions and select Export. In opened window, select FBX 2019. Untick Collision checkbox, as it tends to create some simple stupid boxes which has no use for simulation. And hit Export. Now you can open FBX in Houdini or Ambergen or any other software which can make simulations. As my case was pretty custom and I wasn't able to find and download any free or paid VDBs which suits my scenario, I needed some really high quality. So I contacted my colleague Julian to create this simulation fitting my animation, as I'm not an expert in Houdini. That's the benefit of working in the industry, because you have all contacts that you need. So Julian set all the emitters, forces and baked VDB for me. He does a really cool job on Houdini, so hit him up in direct messages if you need some Houdini masterpieces. Link is in the description. Alright, we are getting to the part of importing VDBs to Unreal Engine. But before we are doing that, listen carefully, it's very important. Make sure that your VDB sequence does not contain dots in its file name. Unreal does not support dots in asset names and your VDB sequence will 100% fail to input. So you would need to rename the sequence files or use Total Commander for bulk name replacement. I received this VDB from Julian renamed it and pick first frame of sequence and just drag and drop it to content browser. Import a sequence, for smoke you don't need temperature even though Houdini renders this pass. Set all B attributes to none. It will take some time for Unreal to create cached animation and we're almost set. Now you need to create VDB material so you can place it into the scene and align with your animation. I have already created it and I would say I won't be able to figure it out without other great YouTubers as there is no documentation about it yet. I won't get in depth on how to create it as otherwise this video would be 40 minutes long. So for tutorial of how to create VDB material check out Winbush video who did amazing explanation how to create it. Or if you are as lazy as I am just download the files by the link in the description and edit the content folder of your project. Now we have everything we need. Open material instance and assign your cached animation of the VDB you imported. Time to add heterogeneous volume, new asset that is available in Unreal Engine 5.3 for VDB actor playback. Click here on quickly add actor and without selecting anything start typing heterogeneous. You will see it pop up. Drag and drop it into your scene. You will see this dragon blueprint actor which will allow you to drag blueprint around. Go to details tab and look for material. 
take your VDB material instance that you have just created or downloaded by the link in the description and apply it to the volume actor. Make sure to set FPS same to your sequence. In my case, it's 25 frames, as it is animation, tick plane and looping checkboxes. Something just is not right, in it. First of all, it's too thick, so we need to lower density. For smoke, it should be something around 0.03. Navigate to a VDB material instance, change density multiplier by 0.03. Now it looks like it's supposed to, although it's moving different direction. Because by default Houdini uses different coordinate system, which is Y up and Z for depth. I forgot to mention to my colleague that Unreal uses Z up by default. But no worries, for our case it's even better, so you will know how to overcome these issues when working with the custom VDBs. For fixing that, we need to transform our VDB actor. Set minus 90 degrees by X axis and multiply it by minus 1 also on X axis. Now it's fitting our animation and we can proceed. Now it's time for the next stage, aligning your VDB with the animation. Open your sequence, place VDB to your scene, click on Add Track, Act it to Sequencer and add heterogeneous volume you selected. Put playhead in the middle of your sequence, in my case it's 19th frame, and set same frame in your VDB volume. Align transforms and scale for smoke simulation, so it fits wheel size and position. In Sequencer, in your heterogeneous volume, add heterogeneous volume element, and here add frame. On the first frame, set the zero frame, and move it to the last frame of your sequence, put another keyframe, and change the frame to the last one. In my case, it's 70 frames. This will guarantee that your animation will play at the same rate as your sequence. And while it's done and all working. Now let's get to lighting stage. I noticed that VDB volume becomes pitch black when occluded by shadow. In my opinion it feels like it doesn't receive skylight and shadow casted by any object makes it just completely dark, which makes it look really bad and not real. I hope it's something that will be fixed in the future. In the meanwhile, let me show how to work around this issue. Let's jump into my city sample scene, so I can demonstrate it better. What I wanted to achieve is to make smoke come out from shadow to light and make it glow for the beautiful shot. But in the very beginning it was dark and black and it was not the result I expected. But heterogeneous volumes receive lights from different sources, including spotlight, rectangle light and point light, so we can fix it. Looking at the scene I understood that skylight should be coming from other side of the bridge and light our smoke. So I placed here rectangle light, changed its intensity and color to match skylight. That dramatically improved smoke quality in dark area of the shot. As I didn't want the light affect any other parts of my scene, I changed its light channel and set it to 1 and enable light channel 1 for the VDB volume, so it will also receive light from this source. I was also talking about this technique in my other lighting tips video, so check it out if you would like to know more about lighting in Unreal Engine. This is exactly what I wanted and what I expected. I rendered this shot in Lumen, pretty quick. Uh, yep, no pass tracing. Imported to DaVinci Resolve and color graded. But color grading is a topic for my next video. Talking about pass tracing, by the way. By default, pass tracing won't be showing VDBs and there is no checkbox for that in Actor Blueprint. You need to use console variable, which is rpasstracing.heterogeneousvolume1. In that case, you will have it displayed, have self-occlusion and self-shading, and also your VDBs will cast shadows and receive skylight. But you will need to play around with material settings, as it will look a little bit different. Let's talk about downsides. Currently, Lumen doesn't support casting shadow by VDB. I contacted David Bailey, technical consultant at Epic Games, to check if it's going to be fixed in the future, and he said yes, it is the plan for Unreal 5.4. And in the current version, unfortunately, it's limitation of Lumen. Anyway, having VDBs natively supported in Unreal is a massive step for film production. I still don't believe it is suitable for games yet, but running it in real time for virtual production and cinematography is definitely a massive upgrade. And if you are interested in Unreal Engine 4 cinematics, check out my other videos on the channel. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new tutorials. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.